Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be unboxing and reviewing the Medea 8000 BTU window air conditioner. I did receive this product to review, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in my video description below. They also make a 10,000 and a 12,000 BTU version of this. At 8,000 BTUs, they rate this for around 350 square feet of coverage. This is a smart window air conditioner too, so we can use it with Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. It's got a really cool design too, so I can't wait to show you guys more about that. But basically with this design, we'll be able to still open and close our window with the unit installed. So you can see the nice retail box and packaging right here. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the package contents. Here are all the package contents. First up, you can see all of our user documentation. We have our smart installation instructions with color screen grabs walking through step-by-step -step how to set everything up, complete with QR codes, and again, full setup instructions. Then we have our remote control, user guide and manual right here walking us through all the different buttons and their functions. Then we have our warranty registration right here. We have our installation guide. So you can see that with the QR code if you need any help. Here it is from both sides. And then last but not least, we have our user manual right here that walks us through all the product features and installation again. So it's a big booklet going through everything we need to know. Then you can see we have a bunch of different foam pieces to use. Again, right here too, for a proper seal and fit for our window. We have our hardware kit with our screws and bolts. We have all of our different brackets. You can see the bracket right here and additional parts for it. Then we have our remote control instructions for the battery. And we have the remote control itself right here. Really a nice remote control, looks great. Here's the back side of it. You can see it from all different sides and angles. Look at that though with all of our controls right there. And then last but not least, we have the unit itself. You can see the nice control panel on the front of it for us with their logo and branding. Looks really nice, very stylish and sleek. We have our air filter in the front as well too. We can remove this cover for that. Now let's go ahead, let's go over the controls. So on page 10 of the user guide and manual, they start going over the operating control instructions. You can see all of our buttons clearly labeled and marked for us at the center of the unit on the front. Really nice control panel right here. So we got our power on and off button. We have our Wi-Fi connect button, our timer button, our eco button, our mode selection button. We got auto cool dry and fan, up and down arrow keys, fan button right there, sleep button as well so you can activate sleep mode if you want. Then we have our swing button and that's gonna complete the control panel on the front for this unit. Now let's go ahead, let's walk through the setup instructions. So the instructions are pretty simple and straightforward. They show you the required installation hardware, optional installation hardware. Then you can see we have our window requirements, whether it's wooden windows or vinyl clad windows and they show you how it should be configured right there. Then we have step one, which is simple as installing the support bracket, and they walk you through that in multiple steps. That continues on this side. Then we have step two, which is secure the unit to the bracket. And then we have step three, our third and final step, that seal and close the window right here. So that's where we're gonna be installing all the different foam panels that they included for us to use, which is really nice. Then don't forget, we can also jump over and set it up with the smart controls and using the Medea app. So now let's go ahead, let's get this installed. Before we proceed any further, I just want you guys to know that going forward, if you choose to continue to watch this video, please use your own discretion. Anything made in this video for our installation is unique to our own studio space and window. So consult the user guide and manual. Be sure to check out their helpful documentation online. They have plenty of support videos to get it installed properly for your needs to practice all the proper safety procedures. If you decide to watch further on in this video, do so at your own risk. We are not responsible in any way for anything that would happen to you in regards to the installation. Refer to the Medea user guide manual and their videos online. 
So step one is basically just measuring out the support bracket and getting that installed. So take a tape measure, measure out your window, find the midpoint, mark it on your window, then come back here. We have two included brackets. You can see I used the longer bracket. That's what I needed for my size window. You're gonna stick that in. Then basically from that midpoint, you're gonna set this bracket in the window and expand these out until it's at its maximum expansion right there and you're all set and ready to go. Also, I want to point out, make sure these are installed properly as well. They just lip under and you can see right here, we have ours installed because they can't come out. If yours come out, that's fine. You can just slide them right back in on this side. So that's why you need to make sure that the um, leg supports are in there properly. So they fit right in the groove and they should not be able to come out with that lip that they have on them. Then you're gonna place either the long or the short bracket in here, go to your window and adjust them both out as equally as possible to get it right in the center and you're ready to go to the next step. So here's what I'm working with with my setup and my window. You can see I have an additional window right here. So this isn't gonna be super useful to me besides just extending out further past the window to act as like a backup, you know, to keep it from ever falling out the window unless it rips the whole window out, which would be, you know, a much bigger issue than this AC. And then on this side, this is where we're actually gonna attach a screw. I'm gonna put one screw through here. I think that's gonna be good enough. Honestly, I'm convinced I don't even need to do a screw for this with this setup in the stand and how it's gonna carry the weight as it just rests in here. And, uh, you know, there's not a lot of heavily trafficked area or anything where this is going. But again, refer to the user guide and manual. You can also see we got it level right here. It's good enough for what we're doing. You can check for level here or down here, depending on the size of your level. Also, we got our midpoint right here. So we're right on track with that. Again, I just extended this out. And then this one, I could extend out even further if I really wanted to, but you can just see the options right there. Just wanna make sure it was past the window. That's all for me. And then I can show you out here, guys, what we did. But basically, you're just gonna push the feet back till they hit against the house. And then that this is level, so that's how you're gonna check it. In my case, we had to go all the way to one. We didn't have any other options, so that was interesting there too. But everything worked so far so good. Just pull that out, slide the pin in, and then put the clip back in. Let me show you it from this angle too. So if you guys can see the feet on the vinyl siding right there just rest in place. But it's pretty firm. This one's under a lot more pressure and tension already than I'd say this one is, but they're both all ready to support the weight of the unit. So it's actually a pretty cool bracket and setup. I really like what we're dealing with right here. So now let's go ahead, let's finish setup. So we got our screw in right there on the side. They do give you a couple different screw options. I just went with the shorter one, but I'm probably regretting that a little bit. You could put the longer version in here if you really wanna hit into the stud, depending on how your window is configured. But there should be a wood stud back there, especially if you get a longer screw that you can go through the drywall and actually get it into the wood. You'll notice that too when you're using your drill bit to drill out that hole, you'll see some drywall and you'll also see wood once you get there. So just keep that in mind. Couple different options you can use right there at this step. Next up at this step, I went ahead, I already set the unit on here to see what sort of gaps I would have. I felt like it was in my best interest to take this piece of foam right here. I cut it to fit and put it along the top just to make sure there's a good seal here when the unit's resting on there. So there's no extra air getting through that doesn't need to be. Then I went ahead, so I used that as the line, and I just wrapped around the extra down here just to see if that helps at all. Obviously, you can see there's still some spaces, so it's not perfect, but I cared more about right up here where the unit's going to rest to try to seal any gaps. And I do have some extra left over, just a little bit. I could fill in the gaps here after we're finished to see if that makes a difference as well. But that's what I went ahead to do right now before we get the unit on there. But now let's go ahead, let me place the unit on, and let's see how it looks. All right, so here we go. You can see I have the window unit in. Let's look at that foam again. You can see down here, there's still a little gap, but it's much better than what it would have been if this wasn't here. And I can take that extra piece now and just put it right here. Same with this side, still a slight tiny gap right there, but it did a really nice job creating a good seal everywhere else with the foam where I was concerned. Also guys, when you're lining this up, follow the pattern right here. There's this groove in this channel. This is raised on the bracket or up in the unit, I should say, that's where you're gonna put it. So the bracket for the stand's gonna rest in that raised groove of the unit. So there's two individual channels that you want to set it on. But there we go, we got it in the window. Let's finish set up. So the install was cutting it a little bit close right here, but you can see there's our window. And obviously we can position that how we see fit. But with that being said, the next step is to install these brackets. 
So you can see it might have been overkill to foam this area, especially when we got to get in there for the bracket. So just keep that in mind. But I was able just to push it right in right there. We attach a one half screw right here and a quarter inch screw right there. I'll show you those on the other side. But we do that on both sides right here. So here's the bigger screw, the half inch screw. That's going to go in that hole. Just be careful not to cross thread anything. This one was more difficult than the other side, but I was able to work it in and back out a couple of times and we're all set and good to go without stripping anything. And then you take the screw that's half the size, the quarter inch one, and that's going to drop down into here. You can see we actually have two hole placements right there. That's the one I chose to use. And our bracket's got a little bit of a wiggle still. It's not um, flush in there. I could probably really try to tighten it, but I don't want to strip the screws at all. And it's going to be good enough just to keep it from shifting around. And so it's going to keep it uh, good enough in place, especially because we're going to be shutting this window when we're using this air conditioner. I'm not really too worried about being able to open it again, but this is really neat. I really like this option that we can open our window up whenever we want. So just want to show you guys that again. Here it is. So we just make it through, which is pretty crazy. There isn't that much room to spare, which is probably a good thing, but also, you know, there's not really much room for margin for air. But there we go. Put the brackets on. Again, this might be overkill at the end. We'll find out here in a little bit. But put the two screws in. The longer one goes into the unit. The smaller screw you have is going to go into the bracket, into your other bracket right there. We can see that from the other side. Now we're ready to cut our foam and wrap up the installation. So you can see our pieces of foam right here. This is going to go on the right side of the unit, just like this, mounted to this clip right here. So the easiest way for me to measure it, I'm going to put it in the window just like this and then take a pen and mark both sides. You can see on this side, we did the same thing and we got our rough estimate of where we're going to cut that piece of foam to fit right in there. Also, they give us these additional pieces of foam if you have a flat sill and you need some extra um, foam at the bottom so we can adhere that to this piece once we cut it. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to cut one of these first. We're going to put it in there, see where we're at. I'm thinking we might need this extra piece too, which we'd obviously have to cut as well. Also, the extra piece of this, I'd probably recommend um, using the white one if I could do this over again. They give us some white foam right here. I would have used this on the bottom because this is actually made to go right here on the bottom of this. You're going to loop it around or just this. You're going to put it around the bottom right here to give you that final little bit of foam and cushion. Not the end of the world for me. I can always get some more of that foam and this might be good enough too. But just keep that in mind. You could just cut it off and use the extra right here and still do my little trick right here. Or you could just try to use these pieces down here before or after installation. And I might end up using these pieces right here now for this. So just keep that in mind. You might not want to follow my um, advice right there. Or at least follow it and then cut it here. So you have that extra piece to use right here on both sides for the rest of the foam installation. So I'm back now with the foam cut for both sides right here. We can check it out. There you go. You can see you're just going to cut it and you can just use a kitchen knife. So just make your measurement, press it down into here. And then you can see when you move that clip back out, you can kind of just force it and push it in place. So that's it, guys. Cut the foam how you want it. Then you can see, too, we have a screw right here. we got to unscrew that so we can slide this. I believe it's a safety bracket out. So, again, if you can put it in there, great. You can see my windows. If I want it shut all the way, i got to keep it further out. But this is supposed to go into here to prevent anything, I guess, from falling out as well. So be sure to take advantage of that and refer to the user guide and manual. But you can see it again on both sides. Extend that out and then put the screw right back in there. And there's our foam. So now let me shut the window and you guys can see. This is what we have left, guys. A little bit of a gap, which this would be perfect for. I wouldn't need it at the bottom for my setup, but it'd be nice to have it right here at the top, maybe along that bracket. So keep that in mind. Up to you. I still have the white strips left that I could use. Same thing, a little bit of a gap right here. We could also take one of those extra pieces we didn't need and I could cram it up there too, just like that. And then we have it all better, at least for the time being in that area. And then don't forget, we have some more foam for the top of our window. We can place that foam in up here, just like you see here. You can just cram it in to seal that gap as well. So you have a lot of different options with the foam. You can get really creative with what you want to do. But there's the unit fully installed. It looks really nice. 
You can see it right there. Now let's go ahead, let's plug it in, power it on, and connect it with the app. Here's a quick peek of it outside. You can see what the unit looks like on the outside of the window. It's running right now too. So you can get a quick look and feel for what it looks like outside your window right here. So just scan the QR code in the user guide and manual to be able to download the app automatically, or you can search for the Medea app on the iOS and Android app stores. It does work with both platforms. Once you download the app, create an account, you'll be at this home screen where you're ready to add a new device. So let's go ahead, let's push the plus button. Let's add a device. We have a nice guide right here letting us know it's not compatible with five gigahertz network. So make sure you're using a local 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. We can select okay give it some Bluetooth permissions as well. Here we go, you can see the different options that we have. In this case, we're gonna be doing a window AC right now. So power on the device, wait five seconds, then click next. Then we can select next. Press and hold the Wi-Fi button for more than three seconds until the device displays the word app, then click next. So let's go ahead, let's do that step right now. So we held down the Wi-Fi button for three seconds, and now you can see on our unit it says app. Literally after about three seconds, it beeped, and then it says app on the display. You can see that right there. Let's go ahead, let's select next. Now it's counting down for us. You can see six, five, so we have a little clock right there letting us know it's counting down till the next step. And there we go. Now we need to go to our phone's Wi-Fi settings, and here we go. If you're on iOS, it's gonna ask for us to join it automatically. We're gonna select join right here. There's the password guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we need to connect to our home network. So go ahead, find your home network and select star configuration. Just take note, you must be on a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network in order to proceed. Now it's working on connecting to our network. There we go, it took less than 30 seconds. Everything was set up successfully. Now we're at our next screen where it says device name. So we can choose what we want right here. Let's go ahead, let's choose master bedroom. Here's custom name. We can change it if we want. Let's just do um, AC, select save. Everything was successful. And there we go, our device was successfully added. Now let's go ahead, let's jump right in and look at some of the device settings. So go ahead, select the device. Now you can see all the settings we have to go over. First, we're getting our temperature reading at the top, outdoor 63, inside it's 67 degrees. Let's look at all the device settings in the top right hand corner, select the three dots. First up, you can see our express run settings. We can choose our express run mode settings right here. So you can see our different options with our mode, our temperature and our fan. So some of them can't be changed depending on what uh, mode you're in, but you can see that right here. We have some flexibility depending on the mode that we desire. So you can see that right there with the flexibility that express run has. So just set that to whatever you prefer. Then we have our scheduling option right here. We can add a new schedule, 24 hour or 12 hour modes. Choose the time, if you want it to come on or off, which days of the week you want it to repeat. Then you can also choose the settings you want to, what do you want to have happen at that time? Do you want like a wake up mode, a sleep mode, that sort of thing, you can set your routine and schedule right here and you can name it as well. Then you can see we have our sleep curve, so we can adjust the temperature if we want while we're sleeping. So you can see that right there. You can turn it on for custom mode. Just drag and drop on the chart. Then you can see we have a troubleshooting option if we're having any issues with the unit. It can self-check, which is really cool, and let you know what's going on if there's any faults that it finds. Then you can see we can adjust our units between Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius. We can also learn more about the device, and we can share the device. If you click share device, it'll show a QR code that somebody else can scan to control your device. We can also delete the device right here. Now let's go back to that main menu page right here where you can see all the different icons we have to switch modes. So let's look at the bottom first. You can see all the icons down here. We have our fan speed, express run. We have our horizontal button, so we can use that to adjust if we want the air vent to actually start fluctuating. So let me show you guys that. Now you can see it's moving. So it beeped to register, it's being controlled. And now you'll notice that the flap starts to move horizontally back and forth, which is really cool. Just to help kind of spread out more of the air in your room, just better airflow. Love that option right there, really neat. So I'm watching it right now and it's moving really slowly, very quiet, just flaps back and forth for you. So you can see that we can turn that back off. 
We have eco mode if we want to enable that right here. We have our boost option. So now the fan's really spinning up. I can hear it. It's definitely noticeable here now. But it's too quiet that the microphone's not going to pick it up. This unit is running in the same room. It's actually directly behind me. Then we could enable sleep curve if we want right here. We could turn sleep curve on. But in this case, we're going to leave that off. We can turn the LED light on or off. This is important if you're sleeping right next to the unit and you want a really dark room. You can disable the LEDs right there. We can view our schedules quickly right from within the main home screen of the app right here. We don't have any at the moment. And again, you can see we can adjust our fan speed as well to auto mode or we can manually slide it back and forth. And again, if I hit express run, now it's gonna to change to our express run settings, which we looked at earlier and we can tweak those. That's really a nice feature just to be able to have a quick way to boom, push the button and activate what you want. But again, very easy to navigate. We could also just, you know, change the settings right here for the device. So that's pretty cool. So you can see that right there. So that's all the controls we have at our fingertips. Obviously then at the top right here, you can see we can switch between the modes. So we're in cool mode right now. We can go all the way down to 60 degrees. We're all the way up to 86 degrees. You can either just use your finger or you can get precise controls with the plus and minus buttons right there. Obviously there's a power button. We can turn that on or off at the center of the screen. You can see our drive mode right here. Same thing, same controls. Then we have our fan feature, same thing, except we can't change temperature and fan. Then you can see we have our auto mode right here too, and we can change that. And again, whatever mode we land on, let's say we're on cool, we can just go ahead, push the power button, and now we turn the whole unit off. So that's a quick look at the device settings right here. Let's go back out to the main app home screen, and you can see really quickly if we wanted to, it's showing us power off. We can just tap that right there, and it's going to come and power on to the last settings that we have for it. In this case, it's 60 degrees right there. So you can see quick fingertip controls. Everything's easy to use within the app. It just works, clean design, nice layout. Now let's go ahead and let's look at voice control. So this device is compatible with Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys what it's like to set up with Amazon Alexa. You're gonna follow a very similar procedure with Google Assistant. Basically, you're gonna to go to your virtual assistant, you're gonna enter and enable your account credentials information, and then you'll be free to use your assistant to be able to control the device with your voice, which is really cool. So open up the Alexa app, Select the more option in the bottom right hand corner. Then select skills and games from the bottom. Then we gotta go ahead, we gotta search for Medea. So we can search for it right here. And there you go, you can select it. Also at this step, take a minute to read what they have in regards to the controls and how to set everything up. But in this case, we'll be able to use the air conditioner with Alexa to turn on and off, change operating modes, set temperature and other functions. So with that being said, there's some sample commands right here. We can basically turn it on and off and we can set it to a certain temperature right there. Feel free to read reviews if you want as well. But at this step, go ahead, select an able to use right here. It's gonna take us to a separate page to enter our account information and credentials for Medea. So once we log in with that info, we're gonna authorize Amazon Alexa to be able to control our device and it will add it for us. So go ahead, enter your credentials right now. So here's the next screen guys where you can see our Medea AC has been successfully set up with Amazon Alexa so we can select close. And now we can allow Alexa to discover devices like the AC that we just linked it to. And now we're ready then to start using it after it finds the device. So our device added automatically. It actually didn't find any new devices with that search, but that's fine. Just go over to your devices right here. In our case, it's under thermostats and there's the AC. So you can see we have now successfully been connected to it with Amazon Alexa. So let's try out some voice commands. Hey Alexa, turn on AC. All right, check that out. I love when this unit powers on too. It is so cool to watch the vent come up and start its thing. It's really awesome. It's pretty sweet. I can't get over seeing it. It's really cool. Anyways, let's go and let's try another command. Hey Alexa, change AC temperature to 65 degrees. All right, check that out. It's set it to 65, no issues at all right there. 
at this stage too we can go ahead let's do the last command that works right now at the time of the video hey alexa turn off ac and there we go it's going to shut it down for us when you saw during setup that it said you could change modes and stuff, I have been unable to get Alexa to be able to change modes or do any other features with the AC. I'm not sure why they mentioned that already within the app that it was something you could do. Maybe you guys have better luck than I do. In my case though, at the time of this video, that's all the features we get with Alexa. Who knows in the future, maybe some of that will be added, maybe not, but at least you get the basic functionality right off the bat to be able to turn it on and change it to the temperature that you want. So let me share with you guys my final thoughts after using the Medea AC window unit. I can't say enough good things about this product. It is quiet, it is smart, and it does a good job cooling. So I'm very pleased with all the features and the value of this AC unit. I can't say enough good things. The one thing I've seen you guys knock online over and over again is the installation process. And if you are trying to go through the user guide manual for some reason, even though it looks really nice and it looks like it flows and makes sense, it's just not logical and it's very choppy and it's just hard to try to install it and understand what you're doing when you're going through the user guide and manual but they have very helpful videos online that are less than 10 minutes long that you definitely need to watch before you install it. And that'll change your whole perspective and you'll breeze right through the installation process. So be sure, check out the videos before you install the unit and you'll be all set and ready to go. Then you'll be enjoying the unit like I do with the smart tech features, with it being quiet and just the ability to cool your room. So for me, very pleased with it. In the future, if I'm looking for any sort of upgrades or things I would change, definitely wanna have more voice control options, even though I wouldn't use them myself, but it'd be nice to be able to use our Alexa device or our Google Assistant to be able to go through a bunch of commands and control it just like we would from the mobile app. The basic functionality right now, just turning it on and off and adjusting the temperatures is good enough for me, which is why I wouldn't even use those features I'm asking for in the future. But I know a lot of you guys out there would use those features. So other than that, I mean, if I'm being real picky, I want it even quieter in the future, but at some point it's just not gonna be possible as they gotta move air and that's just loud with fans running anyways. But in the future, if it could be even quieter, that would be amazing. But it is really quiet right now and I'm very happy and pleased with the unit overall from the installation process, everything they give you to insulate it and everything else, you know, after the installation process and then with just setting it up with the mobile app, very smooth, straightforward, no issues there at all. So very pleased with that. And we have a ton of different features that we actually can control from within the app. So they do a good job really thinking about sleep modes, schedules, that sort of thing. They just make it easy to use. And I love that they let us turn off the LED lights. So if you're gonna be using this in the room where you're sleeping and you want it to be pitch black and dark and no annoying lights, you can turn that off right from within the app. So it really is a solid choice if you're in the market for a smart window AC unit. Well, that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the product link will be in our video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. Any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. So we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support. While you're at it, can you go ahead and hit that like button for us? and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.